Artifacts are the main way to make your character go from feeling slow and weak to feeling fast, fluid, and powerful. They are also the great equalizer as both whales and free-to-play players are at the mercy of the artifact system. And in this guide, I'm going to break down everything you need to know about artifacts so you can make your characters perform at their absolute best. Hey everyone, Shark here, and I've gotten a lot of requests on stream for this artifact guide for quite some time now. But I wasn't sure how to put it out because this topic just has so much information around it and I didn't want to overwhelm you. So I condensed it as best I could, but I kept the information that I believe will be most helpful for both new players and veterans. In this video, we'll be covering how artifacts work, the best strategies to level and build artifacts, and what artifacts you want to keep, and which ones you want to trash. So let's dive in and start with the basics. You can get some 1 and 2 star artifacts from various little crates and other things you can investigate around the world, but you're mostly going to be getting your artifacts from domains, and you can get a few artifacts, mainly the Gladiators and Wanderers troop set, from bosses too. And you can also get artifacts from doing the Abyss, but that's not a very good source to farm them either. Regardless, domains will be your main source of farming artifacts, but you don't want to earnestly start farming any artifacts until after you've completed your AR-45 Ascension quest. Finishing this quest will upgrade your world level to world level 6 and will guarantee you a 5 star artifact from every single artifact domain you do. And don't worry, you are not missing out on anything by not farming artifacts pre-world level 6 or pre-AR45. You will be farming artifact domains a lot after world level 6 and AR45, and trust me, you will make up for any lost time. Completing the artifact domains this way ends up becoming a lot more efficient because not only are you guaranteed at least one 5-star artifact, but you also get multiple 4-star artifacts. This means that you can use the 5-star artifacts that you farm here for your character that you use the most, but you can also use the 4-star artifacts for characters that haven't received as much attention. And I'll make sure to cover the best artifact leveling strategies later in this video. But for now, it's really important that you understand the basics, meaning what artifact stats do, how leveling artifacts work, and set bonuses. So let's go over artifact stats real quick. Attack increases your attack value, which helps you deal more damage. Most characters use this stat to make their normal attacks, elemental skill, and elemental burst deal more damage. HP increases the total amount of health you have, so you can take more damage before your character gets sent to the Shadow Realm. Defense reduces the damage you receive from attacks. Crit Rate gives your character a chance to score a critical hit, which multiplies your damage by your crit damage stat plus 100%. So if a non-critical hit does 2,500 damage and you have a 150% critical damage stat, you take the 2,500 times 150 plus 100, which is 2,500 times 250%. So it means that when you score a critical hit, that hit will do 6,250 damage instead of 2,500. The TLDR here is that you want a good balance of crit rate and crit damage so you can hit big numbers very frequently. Typically, you'd want a critical rate of at least 50% and at least 100% crit damage, but some characters can achieve way higher results. These stats are fairly common in most games, so you probably are familiar with them, but there are some stats that are unique to Genshin, so we'll go over those now. The first is Elemental Mastery. This enhances the damage of elemental reactions and massively increases the damage of transformative reactions. It also makes Crystallized Shield stronger, but no one plays Geo for the Crystallized Shield, so that doesn't really matter. It's important to note that only the character that triggers the elemental reaction gets the damage boost from Elemental Mastery. So if the character applies a lot of element, but they don't trigger or cause the reaction, then this stat is useless on them. The next stat unique to Genshin is Energy Recharge, and it is one of the most important stats, even more so than Crit Rate and Crit Damage. Having more energy recharge allows you to gain more energy back whenever you receive an energy particle, allowing you to use your elemental burst a lot sooner, hopefully off cooldown. Every character starts with 100% energy recharge, but rarely is that enough, especially for more challenging fights. Unfortunately, the energy recharge requirements vary greatly between characters. But the general rule that I like to use is that if a character spends most of their time on field, then they need half of their elemental burst costs as additional energy recharge percent. 
And if a character spends most of their time off field, then they need their elemental burst cost plus about 20% as additional energy recharge percent. So a character like Alhatham is meant to spend his time on field and he has a 70 cost elemental burst. This means he'll want about 135% energy recharge to use his burst off cooldown. Shangling is an off-field DPS who does all of her damage off-field and her elemental burst costs 80 energy. So to make sure she can use her elemental burst off cooldown, we'll want around 80 plus 20% extra energy recharge percent. Which means we'll want around a total of 200% energy recharge for Shangling so she can use her elemental burst off cooldown because she is an off-field DPS. Now this system is far from perfect, but it's generally a good baseline without having to calculate things like individual particle generation, team particle generation, team buffs from things like Favonius weapons, or Venti's passive. Now that we know what the stats do, let's talk about them on artifacts in more detail. The first thing to know is that the artifacts have a main stat and a substat. Main stats will always increase as you level up artifacts and are therefore the most important. Substats are bonuses that are randomly generated and randomly upgraded every four levels on an artifact. And as an important note, the main stat on an artifact cannot double dip and have the same substat, so you can't have a crit rate circlet with a crit rate substat. The bad news about artifacts is that there is a relentless amount of RNG that goes into them. Not only are the substats randomly generated, but they also level up randomly. And except for the flower and feather artifact, which have static main stats, the other artifacts can have random main stats. Meaning that when you get an artifact, the main stat is randomly generated, the substats are randomly generated, and when you level up that artifact, the substat increases are randomly generated too. But not all artifacts can have the same main stat. The timepiece or sands can have HP percent, attack percent, defense percent, energy recharge percent, or elemental mastery. Of these, generally attack percent, energy recharge, and elemental mastery sands or timepieces are the most useful. A few characters like Yelon and Hu Tao do great with HP% percent sands, and so do some healers and shielders. But we'll talk a little bit more about which artifacts to keep and which ones to trash later. The Goblet can have HP%, percent, Attack%, percent, Defense%, percent, Elemental Mastery, Physical Damage Bonus, or one of the seven Elemental Damage Bonuses as its main stat. These will be the most painful artifacts to farm as there are 13 different options for main stats. And beyond getting the main stat you want, you also have to get the substats you want, and then when you level the artifacts, those substats have to increase or level up in the way you want them to as well. So it's always good practice to save any good elemental damage or physical goblet that you get. However, it's also a good idea to keep elemental mastery goblets, especially if they have good substats. The second most difficult artifact to get is the circlet or the headpiece, which can have HP percent, attack percent, defense percent, elemental mastery, crit rate, crit damage, or healing bonus. You'll almost always want a crit rate or a crit damage headpiece, but elemental mastery can also be nice, and healing bonus is obviously good for healers. Now that we have the potential main stats for the five artifacts down, let's talk about substats. Remember, these are bonus stats you get and they cannot be the same as the artifact main stat. These substats also have to be unique, so you can't have an artifact that has four lines of crit rate, for example. They have to all be different substats. The substats that will be randomly generated are flat attack, flat defense, flat HP, attack percent, defense percent, HP percent, energy recharge percent, elemental mastery, crit rate, and crit damage. And here's a big tip for you, flat stats like flat attack, flat defense, flat HP, those are not good. Attack percent, HP percent, defense percent, those are almost always better because they will give you more attack, defense, whatever as your character grows and as you level them up. But flat stats are always static. And another tip, defense stats are generally not good unless you've got a character like Noel or Albedo or Ito that specifically scales with defense. The top three stats that just about every character in the game wants are energy recharge percent, crit rate, and crit damage. After that, attack percent and elemental mastery can be really great value. And of course, there's always the exception where certain characters want something like HP percent or elemental mastery, but not crit. But again, some of the most desired substats in the game are crit rate, crit damage, and energy recharge, so you want to be on the lookout for artifacts with those substats. 
And when you level an artifact up to plus 4, it can gain an extra substat depending on the quality of the artifact. I'm going to talk about 5 star artifacts for this example, but just know that it can happen for 3 star and 4 star artifacts too. A 5 star artifact will typically roll with 3 substats, and when you get it to plus 4, it will gain a 4th substat. However, you can sometimes get a 5 star artifact that has 4 lines of substats before you ever leveled it up. These default 4 line substat artifacts are generally more valuable because it means you get an extra roll or an extra increase into one of the substats. And again, when you're leveling up artifacts, the main stat increases every level, and one random stat increases every four levels, and it becomes progressively more expensive to level artifacts. But don't worry, because I'll talk about a strategy to get the biggest artifact upgrades for the fewest resources. It's also important to note that the main stat increases will always be fixed, but the substat increases are not only selected at random, but the value of those increases is also random. For example, you could have an artifact that has a crit rate substat of 3.5%, and when you level that artifact up, the increase goes into crit rate instead of the other substats. Well, the increase on the substats are not static, they could be anywhere between 27 and 3.9% for crit rate. So even when you level an artifact, if it goes into the substat you want, there is still a range of values that it could increase by. Now here's the big tip I was telling you about for leveling up artifacts. If you're new and you're just getting your first 5 star artifacts or even your first 4 star artifacts, only go to plus 16 at first. Going to plus 20 on 5 star artifacts takes too many resources early on. Just so you're aware, it takes almost as many resources to get from plus 16 to plus 20 as it does to take an artifact from plus 0 to plus 16. So it's better to level more artifacts to plus 16 than it is to level only 1 or 2 to plus 20 because it costs about the same amount of resources. And if you are a veteran player who is looking to replace or upgrade artifacts, only go to plus 12 on 5 star artifacts. A plus 12 artifact has had 3 substat rolls and there's only 2 more possible increases available from that point forward. Once an artifact is plus 12, you should be able to tell whether it's going to be something that's worth investing into and has potential, or if it's something that belongs in the garbage. If it is good, you can keep rolling it to increase it, but if it's not good, you can roll that artifact into another artifact that could potentially be an upgrade because you retain 80% of the invested experience that you rolled into the artifact in the first place. And real quick, if you're enjoying this so far and if any of this has been helpful, make sure to leave a like on the video and subs to the channel as there are more guides videos about how to get free limited primo gems, account reviews, and more to help you make the best account you can without needing to spend anything on Genshin. Now that we've talked about artifact main stats and substats, you'll also notice that artifacts have set bonuses, so when you equip two or four pieces of an artifact, you'll get extra bonuses. Here's a big tip for you, it is not worth using bad artifacts just to complete a four piece set bonus. The purpose of artifacts is to give you extra stats, so you want artifacts that give you the best overall stats, and not just a set bonus with a bunch of mediocre stats on all your artifact pieces. The only exception to this are characters that are Viridescent Venerer supports and possibly Deepwood Memory supports. They need a 4 piece set bonus because their 4 piece set is just broken strong and it can help your whole team tremendously. But most of the time it's better to use a 2 piece set of something and a 2 piece set of something else on a character if it gives them overall better substats because that's the name of the game is the overall substat amount for your character not whether they have a 4 piece set or not. So now that we talked about rolling artifacts and all the different things and combinations that you can get from artifacts, let's talk about the best strategy to level artifacts, and I've broken this into 5 phases. Now if you're brand new, we can call this phase 0, you first want to level your feather as the flat attack is actually very helpful when you're just starting out. When you're around AR 25 to 30, this is where you're going to be in phase 1. This is where you want to use the highest rarity artifact with a usable main stat. Usable main stats are not necessarily the best main stat for your character, but it's just something that will be helpful, whether it's attack percent, crit energy recharge, elemental mastery, elemental damage, or something like that. In phase 2 of your artifact development strategy, you're going to look for the highest rarity artifact you can find with a desired main stat. 
This is unlikely to happen until at least AR35, but more likely AR40. The desired main stats that you're looking for are things like a crit headpiece instead of an attack headpiece, and an elemental damage goblet instead of an attack goblet. Phase 3 will happen after AR45 and world level 6. You'll start to farm 5 star artifacts here, and you're going to look for a 5 star artifact with a desired main stat. You'll also look for 1 to 2 good substats on these artifacts, crit, energy, recharge, something like that, but you don't don't have to be too picky. Phase 4 is where you can start to become a little bit more picky because now you're going to be looking for 5 star artifacts with your desired main stat and 2 to 4 good substats. And the final phase, phase 5 of the artifact development journey, is where you're looking for artifacts with a good main stat and good substats that you want to save for potential other characters. In other words, all your characters are pretty much built, but you're farming artifacts so when you get a new character that you like, you can make them instantly powerful. Because one of the unfortunate things about leveling artifacts is that if you get a new character, you have to start these phases all over again, especially if a character wants a special artifact set. But the good news is that by following these steps, if you get a brand new character, almost any character in the game can work with multiple artifact sets. So if you already have good pieces leveled up, up on a character that you're not necessarily using or just good pieces that you've leveled up in reserve, you can make this new character that you just got instantly more powerful and then slowly farm up their 4 piece set if you really want to. Next we'll talk about the artifacts that are worth keeping and the ones that are not. There is an enormous variety of artifact combinations you can have, but generally you always want the same things. Crit rate, crit damage, and energy recharge. And remember, as a general rule, percent substats like attack percent and HP percent are always better than flat stats like flat attack and flat HP because percent stats scale much better, especially as you build your characters and level them up more. Let's go over what to look for when you get an artifact in more detail. As always, there are exceptions to this general rule, and you'll have to look at a character's specific kit to understand what they really want. However, you can always come by and ask me what a specific character wants on stream. I stream mornings and Eastern Standard Time on Twitch, and I'd be happy to tell you the specific artifact and subset combinations that a character wants there. But in general terms, here's what you want on each artifact piece. On the headpieces, you're looking for crit rate or crit damage pretty much all of the time. The substats that you're looking for are energy recharge and crit damage or crit rate, whatever is the opposite of the main stat of the headpiece. Elemental mastery is also great unless this artifact is for a character on a geo or a freeze team. Attack percent is also a great substat for most characters, and some characters really like HP or defense percent if their talents use that stat as alternatives to attack. Elemental Mastery main stat headpieces can also be really nice, so if you find an Elemental Mastery main stat headpiece with some good substats, you probably want to save it because there might be a character that wants it in the future. For goblets, you pretty much always want an elemental or a physical damage goblet, because if a character's role is to do damage, they almost always want an elemental damage goblet or a physical damage goblet for physical based damage characters like Eula. However, characters that are triggering transformative reactions like Swirl or Hyperbloom or scale heavily off elemental mastery like Venti, Kazuha, Sucrose, Nahida, or Kuki also do great with Elemental Mastery main stat goblets. And there are a few exceptions like characters that appreciate attack percent goblets like Raiden Shogun using the Catch, the 4 star spear weapon you can get from fishing, but this case is a little bit more rare. It's also very common that supporting characters not meant to deal much damage often want things like an HP goblet to increase their healing or shield strength. Substats to look for on goblets include crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, and elemental mastery, and attack percent or HP percent or defense percent can also be useful depending on which character is using it and what their talents scale off of. The best main stat for timepieces or sands include energy recharge percent, elemental mastery, and attack percent. Energy recharge is great for characters with high energy requirements that don't stay on the field for very long like Xing Chou or Shang Ling. Elemental Mastery is great for reaction carries or characters that scale well with EM like Deluc, Alhatham, or Sucrose. And Attack Percent is great for general DPS characters if they don't need more energy recharge and benefit more from attack than EM like Ning Guang. Support characters may also want main stats that include something like HP percent for more shielding or more healing, 
but often they also want energy recharge sands so they can use their burst off cooldown. If you have to make a choice with your support character between having more healing or shielding with something like an HP% percent sands or enough energy recharge to use your burst off cooldown by using an energy recharge sands, take the energy recharge sands. Having enough energy recharge to use your burst off cooldown is almost always worth the trade-off even with really valuable stats like crit rate and crit damage. And speaking of substats, on your timepiece you want to look for crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, elemental mastery, attack percent or HP percent or other stats that your character's talents may scale off of. Feathers only roll flat attack so look for substats that you want for your character. These typically include the same, crit rate, crit damage, and energy recharge, and of course some other combination of attack percent, elemental mastery, or other things like HP. Just like the feather, the flower only rolls flat HP, and you want to look for the same desired substats of things like crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, attack percent, elemental mastery, or HP percent if your character scales with that as well. And here's a little tip when you're farming artifacts. Flowers and feathers always roll with a static main stat, so it's usually easier to get good substats on them, especially compared with things like circlets or goblets. Because with the circlet, timepiece, and goblet artifacts, you have to get the main stat you want and the substats you want, so that's just another level of RNG you have to deal with. The best way to know which artifacts to keep is to look at the artifact set and determine which stats you don't need. For example, if you went to the Husk of Opulent Dreams domain and got a piece that had attack percent, flat HP, and elemental mastery, that would not be a good piece and you could get rid of it. Remember, flat stats like flat HP are not very valuable. Attack percent is nice, but since this set increases your defense and your geo damage, it is typically used for characters that want increased defense like Noel or Ito or Albedo, attack percent isn't that valuable in this case. And of course, since this set also increases geo damage, it's meant for geo characters and geo does not have an offensive reaction, so there's no need to build EM at all. However, if we had this artifact on the Flower of Paradise Lost set, it could be much better. This set is meant for characters that like to trigger Bloom, Hyperbloom, and Burgeon. These reactions cannot crit, so we don't need artifacts that crit. What we do need is artifacts with EM. So depending on the roles, this could actually be an artifact that ends up being quite useful, but again, it's situational, so you have to kind of determine which artifact set you want to use for which character, and then try to figure out what stats you want for that character. But as a good rule, if you ever get an artifact with a good set of substats, it's almost always worth keeping. For example, even though the Flower of Paradise Lost set is designed for elemental reactions that don't crit, if I got a piece with crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, and energy recharge, that's a really good artifact and I would definitely keep it. Even though that specific artifact with those substats doesn't really help most characters that want to use a four-piece Paradise Lost set, the substats are good enough that I could use two pieces of that set and then use two pieces of another set and have a really good artifact two-piece, two-piece set, especially for a character that might want extra EM like Al Haytham. So it is worth saving artifacts with really good substats, even if the main stat isn't super useful because it could become very relevant for a character later. Now that we've covered how to know which artifacts are worth keeping, let's move on to some specific character builds I have and I'll tell you why I use the specific combinations of artifacts on them. First up, we have Wanderer. Wanderer is sort of an on-field DPS. He's an animo character, but he doesn't actually want the Viridescent set. He instead prefers something like the 4-piece Desert Pavilion Chronicles or a 2-piece 2-piece artifact set with really good substats. As we can see from the overall attributes, my Wanderer is level 90, has about 1900 attack, about 90% crit rate, 190% crit damage, 124% energy recharge, and about 70 animo damage. As we look into his specific headpiece, he has a crit damage helm with 9.3% attack, energy recharge percent, and 10.5% crit rate. It also has flat defense, which is basically the worst stat you can have on an artifact, but this rolled once into attack percent, twice into crit rate, and then once into flat defense. So overall, it rolled three times into stats I wanted, and only one time into a substat I didn't, meaning it's a really good artifact. Since I'm running the four-piece Desert Pavilion Chronicle, my off-piece is my Animo Goblet, and it's one of the best Animo Goblets I have. Unfortunately, it's not very good. But it does have crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, and unfortunately, it has defense percent as well. This artifact started out with three substats, defense percent, crit 
crit damage and attack percents, I rolled it to plus 4 and it rolled crit rate which automatically made it a really good artifact to roll. Since it had a main stat I was looking for as well as having crit rate, crit damage and attack percents, unfortunately it rolled twice into attack percent, it had a low roll into crit and it also rolled into defense percent. So while it's not the best artifact, it still is quite usable. Next up is my sands. I went with attack percent because Wanderer is an on-field carry that doesn't need an energy recharge sands, and he also doesn't really care about elemental mastery that much. Even though swirl damage can be nice, you want to build Wanderer for his damage, not for swirl damage typically. This sands has crit rate, flat defense, crit damage, and HP percent. Unfortunately, it rolled one time into each of these stats. If the flat defense or the HP had rolled into one of the crit stats, it would be a lot better, but it's still a usable piece. Next up is the Feather, and this is really good because it came with energy recharge, crit rate, and crit damage. It rolled all into energy recharge and crit damage, and it also avoided flat defense. So this is a really good piece because it gives Wander a lot more energy recharge and a lot of crit damage. He's running a crit rate weapon, so this is very helpful. And finally, we have the Flower, which may be one of the best pieces I have overall. This piece has elemental mastery, crit rate, and crit damage, but the crit rate is 7% and the crit damage is 30.3%. This artifact has a very high CV or crit value of 44. This is a term you may hear people talk about when they're discussing artifacts. Crit value is just the crit rate times 2 plus the crit damage of an artifact. Since this has 7% crit rate, then you take that, multiply it by 2 for 14, add that to the crit damage of 30, and now your crit value is 44. Generally, anything above 40 crit value is considered very, very good, but crit value is not really a real measurement. It's just something people kind of came up with to sort of understand the overall strength of crit on an artifact piece. What's more important than the crit value of a specific piece is the overall stats it gives to your character. So if your character really wants something like elemental mastery or energy recharge, and you have a piece that gives a lot of those stats, that can be better than a high crit value piece. Because the overall combination of stats that your five artifacts give are more important than just one really good piece. So that's Wanderer, fairly typical on-field DPS build, now let's move on to some other characters. Next let's talk about Yao Yao. I built Yao Yao to be a healer and off-field support. She's running a 4-piece Deepwood Memory set, and I designed her with as much HP as I could because that increases the potency of her heals. If I wanted to try and make her optimized for damage, I could give her attack percent or elemental mastery artifacts, but I decided that was a much more difficult route to go for, so instead I just went for HP percent energy recharge, some crit stats because she's using a Favonius Lance and that passive needs to crit, so she has to have a little bit of crit rate so that she can somewhat reliably proc that passive, and then enough energy recharge to use her burst off cooldown if she needs to, which she really doesn't, but it is always nice just to have that. As you can see, I have some HP artifacts and they've got some really good substats and some really good rolls. These were pieces that I didn't think I would need, but because they had really good substats, I figured there would be some healer that would want to run Deepwood and would want some artifacts with these substats, so I kept them when Yao Yao came out. I just leveled them up and gave them to her. You also may notice that a lot of these artifacts have extra crit damage. That is not intentional, I don't really care or want any crit damage, but she does have a about 50% extra crit damage just because of the way the artifacts rolled. And using a healing bonus circlet on her would be better for healing than HP percent, but because I don't have a healing bonus circlet that matches anywhere near the subsets of my HP percent circlet, specifically the crit rate and the energy recharge, I'm using that HP% percent headpiece on her. This gives me more energy recharge for my burst if I need it, but the crit rate is really valuable because it allows me to proc the Favonius Lance passive more frequently. Yao Yao is also using the 4-piece Deepwood Memory set, not because I want the Dendro damage bonus for her, but because I want the Dendro Resistance Shred for potential Dendro characters I may run Yao Yao with. This includes characters like Nahida or Alhatham, who do very well on a Deepwood Memory set, but do even better on a Gilded Dream set. However, to run Gilded Dreams on those characters, you need another character that runs the Deepwood Memory set. So that's where Yao Yao comes in. She's a Dendro Resist Shredding Support that can apply some off-field Dendro as needed. She has a little bit of Crit Rate and a Favonius Lance to help recharge the team's energy. And she's built for healing, 
so if anyone needs a little bit more health after taking some damage, she can top them all up. Because Yao Yao is a really good supporting character, I fully went into building her support instead of trying to build her damage, so that way whenever I ran her with a team, specifically with another Dendro character, she could really help them out. Now let's move on to Raiden. This is a character I've seen a lot on account reviews, and I wanted to go over her specifically because she's a little bit different than your average character. My Raiden is built to be an on-field damage dealer for a short amount of time with the four-piece emblem of the Severed Fate set, However, you can also build Raiden with a bunch of EM for Dendro and Aggravate teams, and in that style you just build her with as much EM as possible, and you don't care about nearly the same level of substat requirements that you do for the on-field version. The version of Raiden that I'm running is very effective, but can also be very stat hungry as I'll show you in just a sec. So let's go over her stats and break down why we're doing what we're doing. To start, she has a little over 1600 attack, she's got 52 crit rate, about 177 crit damage, almost 300% energy recharge, and you see that she has 78.6% electro damage bonus, but she's not running an electro damage goblet. The reason is Raiden has a passive where she converts a percentage of her energy recharge above 100% into electro damage. And so since I have nearly 300% energy recharge, that means I have nearly 80% extra electro damage from her passive. This allows us to do something interesting, which is to run an attack goblet on her instead of an electro damage goblet. And that's an advantage because it's way easier to get an attack goblet with good substats than it is to get an electro goblet with good substats. And because a lot of Raiden's damage comes from energy recharge, you really want a high amount of energy recharge, but you also want attack percent, crit rate, and crit damage. So for her headpiece, she's got a crit damage circlet with 14% crit rate, which is a lot as well as 12.3% energy recharge. Again, her goblet is an attack goblet, and it's got 3.5% crit rate, 18.8 .8 energy recharge, and 20% crit damage. Her sands is an energy recharge sands with crit rate, crit damage, HP percent, and a couple rolls into flat HP. Unfortunate, but the double crit stats and the several rolls into crit rate make it worth using this piece. Her feather has attack percent, crit rate, crit damage, and energy recharge. It rolled once into crit rate, twice into crit damage, and once into energy recharge, making this a really, really good feather. And then her flower has crit rate, crit damage, and energy recharge. This rolled once into crit damage, and then all of the other rolls went directly into crit rate, again making this a very valuable piece. She's using the 4-star weapon, the catch, that you can get for free by fishing, and this increases your elemental burst damage and elemental burst crit rate by 32%, and 12% respectively. Because you run an energy recharge sands on Raiden and not an attack percent sands, this is what allows you to run an attack percent goblet on her, especially with a weapon like the catch. The energy recharge from the catch and the energy recharge from your sands give you about 200% energy recharge before any substats from your artifacts. This increases Raiden's electro damage quite a bit, but it also makes your attack pretty low. And this is the reason why you can run an attack percent goblet on Raiden instead of an electro damage goblet, because you're already getting a good amount of electro damage from her passive, but since your attack's pretty low, you want to boost that up, because when a character wants a bunch of different stats, crit rate attack, EM, energy recharge, all of that, you always see a better boost in damage by leveling all of their stats and trying to get them to a balance, instead of just leveling one stat all the way. This is why people don't run all attack characters, because it's not as good as running attack percent, elemental damage, and crit rate. But if you were using Raiden's signature weapon, the Engulfing Lightning, you would actually want to run an electro damage goblet in most cases. The reason for this is that the passive of the Engulfing Lightning converts your energy recharge into attack percent, and since Raiden runs so much energy recharge, she's getting a ton of attack percent from the weapon passive, so if you were to use an attack percent goblet, you're being kind of redundant and you'd actually get more damage benefit from an electro damage goblet. And that's why I want to go over Raiden, because she's not the typical character and I've seen people with builds all over the place for her. Now let's go over another character who's atypical and that would be Noelle. If we look at my Noelle, she's got 1500 attack, about 1800 defense. 
43 crit rate, 178 crit damage, 133% energy recharge, and 46.6% geo damage. She's using the battle pass weapon, the Serpent Spine, and she's got a four piece gladiator set. The two piece bonus increases her attack by 18%, and the four piece increases her normal attacks by 35%. Now, people would normally recommend running a four-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams on Noelle, which is actually very good. However, I had this four-piece Gladiator set, and the subsets were really nice and everything Noelle wanted, so it was better for me to just give this to her than to try to farm an entire new four-piece artifact set to get artifacts with subsets that would equal or match this artifact set for only a small additional gain in damage. And while Noelle really does appreciate defense, she also really likes attack because at the end of the day, attack is what her damage is based off of even though she has a special ability to convert her defense into attack. So my headpiece is a crit damage circlet. It has defense percent as a substat, which is actually very nice for Noelle. Energy Recharge, which is always appreciated, Crit Rate, and some Attack Percent as well. All of those substats are things Noel wants, so this is a very good piece. My Goblet is an offset Geo Damage piece that has a lot of Energy Recharge, some Attack Percent, and some Crit Damage. While this didn't roll extremely well, just rolled pretty much all into Energy Recharge, Noel actually really appreciates that because her Energy Recharge requirements are pretty steep. She doesn't generate any Energy Particles on her own, and pretty much relies on her whole team to battery her, so the more energy recharge she has, the better it is. So again, while this artifact itself isn't great in the whole scheme of things because it gives her a lot of energy recharge, it's actually pretty decent. And just to give you an example of what I mean by the overall artifact stats are your most important, I could be using this other Geo Damage Goblet. It's also an offset goblet from the Viridescent Venerer set. It has Geo Damage as a main stat and 20% crit damage, flat attack, attack percent, and crit rate. Most people would look at this goblet and say, that's clearly better than the one that you're using. However, my energy recharge would basically be nothing if I didn't have this goblet that I have equipped. Noelle already has some pretty severe energy problems and it would be really hard for me to maintain her elemental burst. So it's better for me to be able to use the burst off cooldown than it is to wait for rotations and lose those precious seconds, especially in the upper floors of the abyss. My sands is a defense percent sands with flat attack, attack percent, HP percent, and crit damage. Most characters want attack percent, EM, or energy recharge, but Noelle really appreciates defense because the more defense she has, the more that she can convert to attack for her elemental burst, and the more damage her shield does because her shield is actually based off of defense percent, not attack percent. Her feather has crit rate, crit damage, a lot of defense percent rolls, and some attack percent, which is again a perfect piece for her. And her flower has crit rate, crit damage, and defense percent as well. So while Noelle is a defense scaling damage dealer, you can see that a lot of the things she wants are actually fairly similar to other characters. She wants a crit headpiece, she wants an elemental damage goblet, the only thing that varies is she wants some defense percent sands and defense percent rolls on her artifact substats. Now let's take a look at a character like Sucrose. Sucrose is an animo character whose entire job is to squirrel, shred elemental resistances, and cause transformative reactions, namely Swirl. Transformative reactions cannot crit, but they do get very strong if you have a lot of elemental mastery, so take a look at how I built her. She's level 90, her attack is about 1100, she has 863 elemental mastery, she has 9% crit rate, no crit damage, the base 50%, her energy recharge is 109%, which I honestly wish was a little bit higher, and she has an animo damage bonus of 39%, which she gets from her ascension. Her artifacts include an elemental mastery headpiece with defense percent, crit rate, and a bunch of flat stats. Her goblet is an elemental mastery goblet with attack percent, defense percent, HP percent, and flat defense, which would normally be a terrible artifact. Her sands is an elemental mastery piece with flat attack, attack percent, HP percent, and flat HP. Again, normally a terrible artifact. And she has a feather with 40 EM, 15% attack, flat HP, and some energy recharge. And finally, a flower with HP percent, 63 elemental mastery, some energy recharge, and some defense percent as well. Her artifact substat rolls are terrible, but that doesn't matter here. 
The only thing that matters is that she's using a four-piece Viridescent set, which she is, and that she's got as much Elemental Mastery as she can get, which is pretty good considering she's got three pieces of Elemental Mastery main stat artifacts. Even if the subsets are awful, that's really all she wants. So I wanted to highlight these characters because I wanted to show you that you don't need to build every single character like a DPS. You don't need to give them a bunch of attack, not every character even needs crit rate, some characters just want HP, energy recharge, or elemental mastery if they're triggering transformative reactions. Overall, it takes a good knowledge of your characters, their kit, what they're designed to do, and how to build them properly and what teams they work in. If you're confused about that or if you need some help, feel free to stop by my stream on Twitch and I'd be happy to help you out figure out a team that would work well for you as well as how to build certain characters. Now there's one more thing I want to cover and this is what we lovingly call the scam box or the artifact strong box. You'll get to a point where you can unlock this at the alchemy table but be warned. While this can be a good way to get artifacts like the Viridescent Venner which is an incredibly good artifact set but a terribly inefficient domain to farm because you'll get a lot of Maiden's Beloved pieces which are just really not that useful anymore. The Artifact Strongbox or Scambox is also horribly inefficient. Even though you can use it to get some really hard to farm artifacts like the Gladiator's Finale, Wanderer's Troop, or just really inefficient domains to farm like the Viridescent Venerer set, it's not recommended that you try this method until you've basically built all the characters that you want because it takes three five-star artifacts to get back one five-star artifact. Now you can put three of any random artifact you've chosen to get back one artifact that you selected. However, the artifact you get back is going to be totally random and it's usually not very good. You could get back a random feather, flower, timepiece, sands, or a circlet and you don't get to choose their main stats and obviously not their substats either. So this is a big risk, especially when you're losing three five-star artifacts to do so. Now obviously, because the result is totally random, you'd only want to put bad five-star artifacts in here, but unless you're just totally swimming in extra artifacts, it's much better to use those bad five-star artifacts to level up good five-star artifacts. Artifacts are very expensive to level and take a lot of artifact experience to go from 1 to 20, so unless you're in phase 4 or phase 5, I would totally avoid the scam box entirely. Unless you're farming multiple four-piece artifact sets from a really efficient domain, like the Emblem of the Severed Fate, and you get a bunch of, let's say, Shiminawa pieces that you feel like you're never going to use, and you want to get a four-piece Viridescent set at the same time. In that scenario, you might be swimming with extra artifacts you don't feel like you're ever going to use, and you might feel like it might be a better use of your artifacts to try and scam box some Viridescent pieces than to try and run the Maiden's Beloved Domain for resin. That's not a bad way to do things, but again, the results are totally random. So I know we've done a lot, but let's do a quick recap with rapid fire big tips to help you in your artifact journey. We went over the basics of the artifact system, how to level them up, which artifacts can have what main stats and substats, and the big tips here were leveling your 5 star artifacts to plus 16 if you're newer and don't have a lot of 5 star artifacts mixed out, and leveling your artifacts to plus 12 if you're a veteran who does have a lot of 5 star artifacts maxed out. The other big tip was to make sure your artifact substats overall are really good and not try to force a 4 piece set if the substats and the main stats on your artifacts are not good. With the only possible exceptions being something like a 4 piece Viridescent Venerer or a 4 piece Deepwood Memories which can be really useful for your whole team so it might be okay if a support character takes the hit and doesn't have the best main stat or substats on those artifact sets. Next we went over the 5 phases of artifact farming, what you should focus on in each phase, as well as what artifacts you should give up and which ones you should keep. The big tip here is that anytime you find an artifact with really good substats, it's always useful to keep it even if you don't have a place for it because you might get a character or they might release a character that would really want that artifact with those combinations of substats. We also covered specific characters and looked at their kits and what artifacts they wanted and why I chose the artifacts I did. The big takeaway here is that you want to look at a character's kit, evaluate where they're going to be in your team, what role they're going to serve, and then you want to build artifacts around those factors. Again, if you need some help, I'll be on stream daily so you can come say hi, ask me or anyone in chat and they'll be happy to help you out. Finally, there's this 
scan box, which you can use to get costly or inefficient to farm artifacts like Gladiators, Wanderers Troop, or the Viridez and Venerer set. But again, the big tip here is not to use this feature at all unless you just have tons and tons and tons of artifacts because it's almost always better to use your bad 5 stars to level up your good 5 stars. With the exception that you can use the scan box earlier if you plan to keep farming one domain over and over and over, and so you'll replace some of the mediocre pieces you get from that domain anyways. I hope this has been helpful and not too overwhelming. I know it's a lot of information, so feel free to jump around to various sections or come back later to the video as it becomes more relevant to you. But I wanted to be thorough because it was apparent that a lot of people did not know this information based on helping them build and improve their accounts as well as draft and build teams. And now that you know all about artifacts, if you want to find out how to level your account the most efficient and effective way possible, while also avoiding a lot of the major headaches people who don't know any better run into, then make sure to check out the video on screen now. So may R and Jesus bless your artifact drops and your artifact rolls, and don't forget that I love you, stay jawsome, may order guide you friends, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.